Welcome back to another video, my name is Paige and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some romance book recommendations and ones that I want to read. So never ever did I think from this channel that I would be doing a video where I actually recommend romance books <laughs> but here we are. I don't have a lot to recommend because I'm still new to the genre so I do have more that I want to read um, but we'll start off with the recommendation ones first because we only have three of them but three is a good amount um, so we'll start with the first romance book that I actually ever not ever read but ever fully remember reading and enjoying and I've kept it for so many years and that is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I absolutely love this book. I love the film too but I feel like this is one of the first books I read when I was like teenager do you know when you're a teenager and you're like i don't read like because you want to like look like you don't read people because like people think it's nerdy or whatever and then like you actually do um that was during this stage so i actually do really really like this book i felt like the chemistry between hazel and goss was just great it's such a beautiful story so heartbreaking but heartwarming but makes you smile and it's just everything that is great about romance and i really really enjoyed it and um, for those who you who don't know about the falling our stars it's about um gus and hazel who meet at a cancer support group so they both have cancer so the book is very heavy on that um so if you're not sort of like if you don't want to read about that then it probably won't be for you but it just follows their journey and they meet at the support group and then they start becoming friends start hanging out with each other and then it develops into more than friends and yeah it's just nice to see their whole relationship how they get on they both deal with their cancer in such different ways and they have both both such have different personalities so like it's good to see that throughout the book how they cope with things differently but how they come together stronger and it's just yeah it's just a really really nice book and I think everyone should go read it this I've actually marked don't like come at me for dog ear in the pages this was like teenage me the last time I read it I got up to page 142 that's like I think I've read it like three or four times I've read it a fair much and then spines broke um but this is just one of those books that i will never ever give away or give to charity or anything just because i love it um and i love the film too but it's just nice to have the actual book form isn't it but yeah that's my first recommendation that's kind of more like a YA type romance book as well and then we've got book lovers by emily henry so i really 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 liked this book i feel like this is definitely the book that got me into the whole romance train that i'm on at the moment which i'm really really enjoying being on which is strange um but yeah this is about nora and charlie so charlie's like a literary agent nora's a writer no nora's a literary agent charlie's an editor um <laughs> maybe i didn't like it that much um but yeah it's about not them two who like Nora moves to like this small town she doesn't move to it but she like goes this small town um on like a holiday like a breakaway and that's where Charlie lives and her and Charlie have a bit of a rivalry um when they first met so it's sort of like rivalry to lovers I guess not like enemies to lovers because they're not enemies they don't like full-on hate each other but they like have a rivalry there um so yeah I just love everything about this book I feel like it just had a good pace of like it wasn't too mushy it wasn't too like too romancy like hands all over each other all the time sort of stuff it was sort of just like nice the pacing of their relationship was sort of realistic and was nice and fun they had like the banter and they had the great personalities and I loved just the whole small town vibe as well sort of like they can't get away from each other because there's literally nowhere to hide because like where they live is so tiny um but yeah I really enjoyed it I feel like it was very very easy to read I feel like Emily Henry's got a really nice writing style that just flows really well um and I could definitely picture myself like not picture like the book and the settings and surroundings throughout the story like in there as well so that's definitely another one I re would recommend I think it's just highly recommended from me just because it is the one that got me into romance 
so I feel like if you're the type like me that only reads thrillers usually or you only read one other genre I feel like if you want to get into romance this is definitely a great book to start with and um, just because it's not too heavy on the romance and there's not really any smut in it there's like a tiny 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 little scene that isn't really anything and then we've got this one completely different to the last one but Icebreaker by Hannah Grace so I read this as a buddy read. I feel like if I hadn't read it as a buddy read, I don't think I'd have picked it up as soon as I did. Um, <clears throat> I feel like this was a good one. The story was good, but it just lasted a very, very long time. Like, the story was... I, I wouldn't even say dragged out. I just feel like it could have ended a little bit sooner, but I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed the second half of the book a lot more than the first half, because in the second half there's a lot less spicy scenes rather than the first half where there's quite a few but this one's about Anastasia who is a figure skater and Nate who is a ice hockey player and basically something happens to one of the rinks at the university there's two rinks which each of them use and now they have to use only one rink so they've got the ice hockey like big championship coming up and also the figure skating competitions coming up so both Anastasia and Nate sort of need the rink as much as possible um, but now they have to share it so, you know, you can see where that's going to go when you've got two competitive people. Um, and then, obviously, from there, they form a relationship and so on and so on. But, yeah, I feel like the relationship between them was good. But I did like the cuter moments more. I felt like there were less cute moments than what there could have been. And more spicy moments, which wasn't bad. I didn't actually hate them as much as I thought I would. I didn't feel as uncomfortable as I thought I would. But... I definitely liked the second half better where you got more depth on their relationship but I did like their separate characters Um personally for me some people thought I know some people on the buddy read thought that like Anastasia's character was a bit annoying and things but I really liked her character I thought she had quite a good like personality throughout it her friend Lola had a better personality um, but obviously I feel like in books you always like the side characters a tiny bit more just because they're not the main focus of the book um, but yeah I enjoyed it it's good like university type um, read so I would definitely recommend going and reading it and it's the first book in the little trilogy as well so they're the ones that I would recommend. I don't, like I said, I don't have many. Hopefully by the end of the year I'll have more. Um, but I've got quite a few that I'm excited to read and I want to read. We'll start off with the first one, which I don't actually have a physical copy of. But it's um, Flawless, the whole Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silva. I'll pop a picture on screen. Um, I really want to read this. <laughs> I feel like because everyone is saying how good it is, but also like I'm um, a proper like cowgirl, cowboy type girl through and through like I love country music I love anything country so I feel like that would just be like a great book to read a whole cowboy romance in a small town you know I'm picturing in my head like horses and ranches and like the whole accent and cowboy hats and cowboy boots and yeah it just makes me dead happy so I'm very excited to start that series I feel like it's a series that I'll progress with quite quickly if I do like it and um, usually if I like series I stop reading them after the first book because I'm scared that it's gonna like not be as good. I've done that with the Caravelle series but I do plan on reading the second one soon and I've done it with the Akatar series and the From Blood and Ash series and with the Dexter series I'm not doing too well on it. <laughs> so you know it's it is what it is I guess but yeah I'm very very excited to read that one. I'm hoping that it will live up to the expectations that I've got of it and I'm hoping it'll live up to the hype that everyone's loving about it um, and I know Elsie Silver's just released another new book as well so I don't know but yeah I'm very excited to get around to that one. And then we've got this one Wildfire by Hannah Gray so I am currently reading this at the moment I am 139 pages in this is also a buddy read um i'm enjoying it a lot more than the first one i feel like the characters in this one so russ and aurora they're so much better not met much better suited but they seem calmer i there's not much spice in it yet and we're almost halfway through so i feel like their their relationship is just completely different um but I do like their characters, I like the whole setting for this story, this one's set in a camp, summer camp, um, so Russ and Aurora are working at the summer camp but there's rules obviously where they're not allowed to 
like have relationships with other camp counsellors and things like that so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes like I'm guessing there's going to be sneaking around and stuff but yeah I'm enjoying it so far so you'll know all my thoughts and stuff in my April wrap up I can't think of what month we're in but yeah I'm enjoying it so far so I've got high hopes for that one and then hopefully the third one when that comes out will be a good read too and then we've got It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. This is like quite a thick one. <clears throat> I feel like a lot of romances are quite long and I'm not sure, still not fully sure how I feel about it, but it's fine. Um, so this one is about Piper and <clears throat> Brendan. Um, I think Brendan's like a fisherman or he lives in a small town where like fishing is very popular and Piper goes to live in that small town after her stepfather decides that she needs to like be a bit more responsible I feel like from what I'm getting from the blurb she's like very high maintenance like goes shopping all the time spends a lot of money maybe doesn't really know how to take care of herself so her stepfather's like told her to go live on this <laughs> in this small town fishing village and she might have to like obviously learn how to fend for herself and look after herself and not spend all her money and things like that like sort of like how the other half live <laughs> type thing um but I've heard lots of other things about Tessa's Tessa Bailey's books and I think this one's part of like a duology or trilogy maybe it's not a standalone but it's the only one that I picked up first except when I did pick it up and flipped through the book <laughs> I found like a spicy scene straight away but yeah it seems like a good one so I'm excited to read that one <clears throat> then the other one that I want to read by Emily Henry next is Beach Read. I'm actually going to take this on holiday with me when I go in a few weeks. I feel like that'll be a good, like, nice little summer read to read on the beach. This one's about January and Gus. Um, January is a hopeless romantic who narrates her life, and Gus is a literary type who thinks true love is a fairy tale. So, very different <clears throat> things. Very different personalities it sounds like so that might be very interesting to read I, I'm just excited to get more into Emily Henry's books and see if it was like if the first one wasn't just a fluke if I actually do really like her writing style and if I do really like what she has to you know say <laughs> in books um but I feel like this is a lot of people's favorite one that's nice it's got a nice little board around it which I like but this is a lot of people's favorite one um so I'm a bit nervous on that but we'll see how we go with it. So that's the next one. Then another one. I feel like I'm just starting loads of romance series here. But I feel like there's a lot of romance. Like most romance books are part of a series. But this one is Things We ne Never Got Over by Lucy Scott. So I'm actually reading this at the end of April. So you won't see my thoughts on this book until May wrap up. But I'm reading this with Buddy Wee Buttonock. This is also a thick one. I don't get it but... Yeah, I don't know how many are in the series of this. I have no idea what it's about, but I've heard good stuff. The cover's pretty with the little daisies on it. Very summery, spring vibes. Um, but yeah, as as it goes with knowing what it's about, I don't really know. I don't really want to read the blurb. Like, I feel like I'd actually be happy going into this blind because I feel sometimes with very popular and hyped books, if I go into them knowing exactly what they're about and don't go into them blind with no opinions at all, I'm just going to form my own opinion of what other people have said. So, I'm going into that one blind. So, unfortunately, you don't get a thing of what it's about. But, um, yeah, I've heard it's good. So, we'll see. Hopefully, it will be. I don't really know much about Lucy Scott as an author. I don't know if, like, her romance is, like, spicy or if it's just, like, well-contained or anything like that. But I guess we'll soon find out. Then we've got two that were randomly on my shelf. Um, which, like, I guess I would probably be excited to read. But it's Sunset on the Square and then we've got Sunrise on the Course. And they're both by Lilac Mills. They're very pretty. Um... But I haven't heard, I'll just hold this one up, I haven't heard anything about Lilac Mills books, like, ever. I've never heard about her as an author. But, you know, they're on my shelf, so I'll probably read them. Um, one, this one's about a holiday Sophie who goes to Tenerife and stumbles across a help wanted sign for a local pensioner, Hugo, and then she accepts the job. So she starts to live, like, so she 
accepts the job in Tenerife, lives in Tenerife, but she realises that it's not all sun, sea and siestas. Um, and Hugo's beautiful villa is under threat. To complicate matters further, his broody nephew Alex has shown up full of suspicion towards Sophie. So I'm guessing there's either going to be a Spanish romance between Sophie and Alex or Sophie's world's going to come crashing down and she's going to lose her job in Tenerife. <laughs> like, either one. But still, very pretty cover. It do does sound actually quite good. I might take that one holiday with me too. And then we've got Sunset on the Square. This is also about someone who lives in Tenerife. Are they all just about Tenerife? Is it the same people? No, this one's about Elspeth, who's lived in Tenerife for over 15 years. Um, and there's not much that, that can surprise her. She's widowed. And soon, handsome Charles, who is staying at her friend's hotel, is suddenly staying at very close quarters. So this one's about Elspeth and Charles. And Elspeth has lived in Tenerife for over 15 years. She's widowed. Um, you know and so that'll be kind of interesting actually to see how an older couple because she's in her late 50s so it'll be interesting to see how an older couple sort of forms a relationship when one of them has lost the husband i feel like that one will be a nice read as well i feel like that one might make me cry maybe but yeah anyway speaking of a book that's going to make you cry apparently a thousand by kisses i actually don't know if it could make me cry if i'm one of these that reads this and doesn't cry am i a bad person or is it definitely definitely gonna make me cry because some people are saying they cry within the first like 10 pages and i'm like how just how can you cry at a book in 10 pages but like i might i'm scared i'll be that person that just won't cry and then people will think i don't have a heart but anyways, this is about rune and poppy who met as children and swore to be friends forever but as teenagers their love grew into a promise. Oh, their friendship grew into a promise that a love that promised to last a lifetime. But their worlds were shattered when Rune was sent home to his native Norway. Two years later, Rune is back and Poppy is ready for their happy ever after to begin. But the boy who returns is not the Rune she remembers. What happened to her sweet, thoughtful Rune into this sprooding stranger? And will the secret Poppy is carrying bring them closer together or separate them from forever? So I get. I can kind of understand why people would cry at that. It does sound like it would be kind of a sad read, especially if he's come back not wanting anything. <laughs> and she's like waiting for him all these years to like start a relationship and then he comes back like, nah, <laughs> don't want one. But um, yeah, I am excited to read it. I'm scared to read it, but I am looking forward to seeing if I cry. That's kind of psychotic. But, you know, I just want to see if it will make me cry. So we'll see. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> And then the final one, I just saw this in the shop and thought, you know what, the cover looks nice, it's a nice summer beachy type read. It's called Beach Rivals and it actually said before I took the sticker off for fans of Emily Henry. So I think that's why I got it. But it's about one bookshop in paradise, two bitter rivals and a whole summer to get through. So this is set in Bali. Mm. And it's about Claire and Jack. So Claire... Is living with her mum and working a job she hates when she sees a viral job advert for a three month bookseller position on a Bali beach. That sounds very nice. And she jumps at the chance. Um, but when she gets there, she realises she's sharing the bookshop and a flat with a handsome but infuriating American man named Jack. So I'm guessing, yeah, it's about Jack and Claire who now have to work together, even though they don't know each other. They've got to work together to run this bookshop in Bali on a beach which sounds great actually like imagine just working on a beach in Bali like that'd be amazing and obviously doing the bookseller position too um but yeah it looks quite a short book actually this is good it's under 300 pages which is nice so I might take that on holiday too <laughs> basically I'm just taking all my books on holiday but yeah I think I think there's a fair few there like that are nice for summer reads because I feel like now I'm into romance and into the whole vibes of it. I feel like I'm going to want to read it during spring and summer time. Like I'm actually going to be reading some other than thrillers. Um, but yeah, 
I don't know. I'm excited. There's a few more that I'm excited for more than others and a couple that I've just read back of where I think, oh actually like that sounds better than what I originally thought. But yeah, the only one I'm going into blind is the things we never got over. The other ones I'll read the blurb for. Probably not before I read them. I don't tend to read the blurb before I read them. Um but I'll read them at some point anyways. But yeah, hopefully maybe we can get through all these this summer. Like I said, I'm in the middle of wildfire. I am going to read Beach Read on holiday and I'm starting things we never got over at the end of the month. So we might actually do it. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. If you have read any of these, then let me know down below. If you've got any other recommendations on romance books to read or romance series to get into, then also let me know. And I'll see you next time for a brand new video. Bye.